What's up guys, today I have a quick start guide for you in Final Cut Pro. If you're maybe switching from iMovie to Final Cut or even like Premiere to Final Cut and you really just want a quick jump start into how to create a video in Final Cut Pro, this is the video for you. Now, as you get more comfortable with Final Cut, you probably wanna know more about its really nice features. So I have to recommend my other channel, Jen Jager Pro Tutorials. I will put a card to it right here and I'll also link to it down below. And if you want a really in-depth understanding of Final Cut, I have to recommend my course, Final Cut Rockstar, which you can find at jenjager.com. I'll link to that down below as well. But if you're really eager to just get into Final Cut and make something, let's just dive right into it together. Okay, once you have downloaded Final Cut from the App Store, you can find it here in your applications and you just click that to open up up Final Cut Pro. And if you've never created something in Final Cut, this is all you're going to see. So how do you get started from here? You need to create what's called a library. A library is like your whole Final Cut project with all the components you're gonna import into Final Cut and the timelines and sequences that you're gonna build in Final Cut. So let's do that by heading up to the top left of the user interface, going to File, New, and Library. And you're going to get this pop-up window. Now by default, Final Cut is going to try to create your first library in your movies folder, but you can put this library anywhere you want. For me, I'm going to add it to this external hard drive and I'm going to name this library FCP Quick Start. Now, before we do anything else, I wanna show you what this library looks like in your Finder, cause that's important for you to know. So I'm going to navigate over to the Finder and this is what the Final Cut package file looks like. It's a purple square with four stars in the middle of it. So when you wanna revisit this library, this is the icon you're gonna to click to open up Final Cut again with all of your project in it. All right, let's head back over to Final Cut and take a look at what we have so far. This left-hand window is called your library's sidebar. You can see the FCP Quick Start we just created with the same logo that I just showed you in the Finder. And underneath is a Smart Collections folder. This is where Final Cut auto sorts your media once you bring it into Final Cut. And this next folder here is called an event. So subfolders in your library are referred to as events in Final Cut. That's really important for you to know. All right, let's import our media. So to do that, you can head up to the top left of the UI and look for this downward arrow. And this opens up your media import window. Now the left side of this window looks a lot like your finder. You need to navigate to wherever your media clips are currently living. So that could be like a memory card from your camera. It could be an external hard drive. It could be Dropbox, it could be anywhere. Let's navigate to where my files are, which is on the desktop. And I'm going to double click the folder I already created called Quick Start Files. And you can see all of my clips have populated this bottom window. And if I wanna preview them, I can just click on them and they appear in this window at the top of the media import window. Now on the right side of the media import window, there are a lot of other options. For this quick start, I'm not gonna get into all of them, but the one you do need to pay attention to is this one right here. Do you wanna copy your files to the library or leave the files in place? I recommend you copy the files to the library. That means that Final Cut will make a copy of all of these clips and bring them into that purple package document I showed you earlier. That way, no matter what computer you open that purple package document on, all of your media will be there. The other option is to leave the files in place and you can do that, but that means that every time you open up your Final Cut library, you're going to need to have that memory card with you or whatever hard drive has all those video clips on it at the same time. So I recommend and Apple recommends that you copy the files to the library. Now to import them, let's select the top one, hold down the shift key, scroll down to the bottom and select the last one to highlight them all and then hit the import all button. Now the other way we can import clips is by dragging and dropping from our finder. Let me just show you that really quick. I'm going to navigate to a music cut in my finder and then just drag this mp3 file right into my event. And now you can see that all of my media is in what's called the browser window. You're gonna be working a lot in the browser window when you edit in Final Cut Pro. This is where you can preview all of your clips and select what part of those clips you're gonna drop into your sequence. So to navigate in the browser window, just click on any clip and hit the space bar to play it back. You'll notice that whatever clip I select 
shows up in what's called my viewer. This is a bigger look at the clips I'm looking at in the browser. But how do we start putting a video together? You need to create what's called a project. In Final Cut, the project is your timeline or maybe you know it as a sequence. So to create a new project, head on up again to File, New, and Select Project. Now you'll see there's lots of shortcuts in Final Cut Pro, but for this quick start, we're not really gonna get into them. If you wanna know more about the Final Cut shortcuts, I'll link to a video video right here that goes through a lot of them. So once we've created a new project, we get this pop-up window. Let's give this project a name. And you have a couple options here. You can either use automatic settings or custom settings to create your project. Automatic settings means that your timeline will take the properties, that means the resolution and the frame rate of the first clip you drop into the timeline, or you can do custom settings and manually make those selections. I'm going to use automatic settings. Let's hit okay. And down here is the start of our sequence, our project. Now to add clips to this project, you can just go on up to the browser and click and drag. And now our first clip is in the project. But what if I didn't want that entire clip? I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that. Now back in the browser window, when I click on a clip, you can see that the entire thumbnail gets a yellow box around it. But what if I wanted to select just part of a clip? I can actually grab the edges of that yellow box and drag them to highlight just the section of the clip I want to add to my timeline. And now I can drag and drop that clip. Let's do a few more. Now you'll notice that as you drag and drop clips into your timeline, they snap together. This is what's called the magnetic timeline and it definitely makes Final Cut different from a lot of other NLEs, but it's great because it's designed to reduce the chance that you'll get a flash frame in your video. Now in your timeline, when you wanna play back what you've created, just move this line right here, this is called your playhead, to the beginning of your timeline and hit the space bar. You'll notice that when I'm working in the browser, whatever I'm clicking on in the browser appears here in the viewer, but when I'm working in the timeline, the clips in my sequence appear in the viewer. Now maybe I wanna fine tune some of these sound bites. I can actually trim the clips by hovering my cursor over the edge of them and dragging them to either tighten them up or expand them. All right, now that I've got my sound bites where I want them, I wanna cover them with some B-roll so we don't just see these guys talking on camera the whole time. B-roll is basically your action shots and I don't wanna hear the B-roll, I just wanna see it and I still wanna hear my subjects talking underneath. That is the goal. So let's head back on over to the browser and look at some of our B-roll shots. I'm going to trim this clip by grabbing the yellow outlines on the clips in our browser. But before I drag it into my timeline, I wanna make sure that I'm only grabbing the video from this shot, not the audio. Let me show you how to switch that off. I'm going to go over to this icon here, drop down and select video only. And then I'm going to drag that B-roll clip and lay it on top of my sound bites. And you'll see that this clip has a little string that's connecting it to the bottom clip. This is called a connected clip. Now in Final Cut and pretty much every other editing system, whatever shot is on top on your timeline is going to be what's visible in your final project. So in this case, I'm hearing this gentleman talk and then I'm still hearing him, but I'm seeing these four people and then I'm coming back to hearing him talk again. Let me add some more B-roll. And just with like our sound bites, I can trim these shots to make them shorter by just grabbing the end and dragging. Now you'll notice that my connected clips don't snap together like the clips on the bottom row. But what they do do is stick with the sound bite in which they are connected to. So watch this. If I grab this bottom clip, the two B-roll shots go with it. And I can reorder my clips just by dragging them and dropping them in my timeline and I can reposition my connected clips as well. But what if we wanted to split a clip in two? You need what's called the blade tool, and you can find all of the tools for Final Cut over here in the tools menu. Right now we're on the select tool, that's our default, but if we head on down to the scissors, the blade tool, I can just click in the middle of a clip and then it's split into two separate parts. Let's go back up to the tools menu and return to the select tool, and now you'll see that that clip is split into two, and I can reorder them as I see fit. Now, what if you wanna zoom in on a shot? That's probably a really common thing that you'd like to know how to do. Just select the shot in your timeline, and then in your viewer, 
enable this tool, the transform tool. It turns blue when you click on it, and then you get this bounding box around your video clip, and you can just grab a corner and enlarge it. Now you'll notice as I enlarge or shrink this shot, the values here in this window are changing. This is called your inspector window. And the inspector window gives you a lot of information about every clip and adjustments you can make with that clip. So while I did grab the edge of that clip to resize it, I could also just grab this slider and do the same. Here in the inspector is where you can also do some color correction. So just enable this little inverted triangle here to access your color tools and you can make a lot of adjustments here. The inspector is also where you can adjust a lot of your audio settings. So let's select a clip that has audio on it. This would be one of our sound bites. And in the inspector, because this clip has audio, I now have this speaker icon. And if I click on that, I can enable and disable different tracks from my clip. And I can also adjust the volume of the clip here as well. Now, what if you wanted to add some effects to your clips? You need to open what's called the effects browser. That is this icon here at the top right of your timeline. And you'll see in my effects browser, I have a lot of different effects because I've collected third party effects over the years. You probably won't have quite this many if you just purchased Final Cut, but let's select one that I know you do have. Let's grab the handheld effect hold down our mouse key and drag it on top of one of our video clips. And now this soundbite, when I play it back, has a handheld feel, even though we shot it on a tripod. Now, if I wanted to adjust that handheld effect, I would go back over to my inspector window and click on the film strip icon. This is your video inspector, and I can use these sliders to increase or decrease how affected that clip is. You'll also probably wanna know how to add some text to your videos, so let me show you where you can find that. That is in your text and generators sidebar. So at the top left of the UI, click on this icon. And again, I have a lot of titles in here from third parties but I'm going to select build in and build out because I know that you have that as well. In the browser window, you can run your cursor over all of these options to see what they do. And when you see one you like, just click it and drag it on top of the clip you wanna apply it to. Just like with other clips, you can trim these as well. Now to modify what the text says, just select it here in your timeline and the text appears here in your viewer. Just double click on that text to highlight it and modify the contents. Now in your inspector window, you can change the font of that text as well as the size. And to change the position, just enable the transform tool again and reposition it wherever you want. Now to add some fun transitions to this, you need to navigate to your transitions browser. That's at the top right of your timeline. It looks like this pointy figure eight. And again, I have many more transitions than you do, but I know you have this one called push. I'm gonna click on that transition, hold down my mouse key and drag it between the two clips I wanna apply it to. And to play it back, just queue up your playhead just before and hit the space bar. Now, if we wanted to change the direction of that move, I would just select the transition here in my timeline, head on up to the inspector and change my options. Now let's add some music under this clip. So head on back to our library's sidebar, this top left icon in the user interface. Let's find that cut of music we brought in before. And I'm going to grab that whole cut and drag it underneath my main clips. And I can scroll over in my timeline to grab the end of it and drag it to the end of my video. And if I want it to fade out, there's this little teardrop that appears at the end of my music when my cursor is hovered over it. And I can just grab that teardrop and drag it down and you can see that my music fades out there. And if I wanted to lower the volume of this music, I could select it and change the volume in my inspector window here at the top right of my user interface or I can just grab this little line here in the middle of the audio clip and drag it down. All right, the last thing you need to know is how to export from Final Cut Pro. Let's head to the top right of the UI and select the share button. Under export file, you can rename your project, whatever you want. And then under settings, you can choose the file format that you're going to export in. When you hit the next button, it asks you where you want that video to land when you're done. Navigate to wherever you want it to go and hit the save button. And you can watch the progress of the export in the background tasks window. All right, so that's a quick jumpstart into Final Cut Pro. 
obviously there's a lot more to know about this very powerful software. So if you want to know a lot more, check out Final Cut Rockstar at jenjager.com or my other channel that has a ton of free content for Final Cut users like you are now. I'm so excited for you to work in Final Cut. I picked out some other videos I know you're going to love. Thanks for hanging out with me today, you guys. I'll see you again.